Hello and welcome to the AWS Well Architected Framework. Let us consider this scenario. We have a solution architect and the solution architect has understood the business requirements, designed the cloud solution and is ready to deploy the solution. And while he is doing that, there are several questions which come to his or her mind. And that is, how do I confirm that all the requirements that are given to me have been completed. If AWS were to assess the solution or the application that I have developed, how will they do their own assessment? What are the industry best practices in place for hosting this application on the cloud? On the other hand, we also have the application owner and they have their own concerns. Have we considered or built everything and are we good to go live? Is this application going to take care of my business needs? And is the cloud configured properly to handle this application? The well-architected framework helps to answer all of these questions. So what exactly is the AWS well-architected framework? The framework helps cloud architects to build infrastructure on the cloud which is secure, which is high performing, which is resilient, which is efficient. And this infrastructure can handle a variety of applications and workloads. The framework helps you to learn the architectural best practices for designing and operating these workloads on the AWS cloud. It also provides a way for consistent measurements of these architectures against the best practices and therefore you are able to identify areas of improvement. And the process for reviewing this architecture is not like an audit, but it is more of a constructive conversation which helps you to make the right architectural decisions. So the framework basically helps you to take the application or the environment that you have built measure it against the industry best practices and accordingly set it up so that it gives you the confidence that all aspects of this environment of this architecture have been taken care of and AWS best practices have been adhered to. What are the pillars of this well-architected framework? First and foremost is operational excellence. Then we have security, reliability, performance efficiency, cost optimization, and this newer one which was added is sustainability. Let's look at each and every one of them one by one. What exactly does operational excellence mean? The operational excellence pillar gives you the direction of how your organization should support your business objectives and how will the workload which is running on AWS be effective and efficient. So as part of running this architecture on the AWS cloud, there will be various operations that you will need to perform. Operations such as backup or disaster recovery or resolution of issues. So the operational excellence pillar helps you to understand and gain insights into all of these. And the output that you get is that you get a continuously improved support processes and procedures which will help you to deliver more business value. So what are the design principles that are in place here? First and foremost you have is perform operations as code. So just like you are building an application and for building an application you need to code it. AWS also recommends that you should take care of operations via code. So you will be able to use tools like Terraform or CloudFormation to make sure that you are codifying all of the actions and activities that you perform rather than what is called as click ops where you click and do something from the console. The reason for that is it is possible that a person may do things in one way and another person may do things in the other way. But if you have your operations designed as code, then there will be a consistent way for you to get things done. The second one is that you should make frequent small reversible changes. Every change that you make to this environment, it should not be like a big bang approach where you're changing just about everything. You should be in a position where you can make small changes, changes which you can easily reverse back 
and these changes should be frequent in nature. An example would be when AWS comes up with a better storage plan, you ideally will not take it up and implement it on all the workloads which is running, but you will take it first in a small environment, test it out, does it give you the benefits and accordingly make those changes environment by environment. You should analyze the operational procedures that you have, identify the opportunities for improvement and continuously evolve these activities. So your workload, the number of customers, they will increase, the workload will increase, you will increase or you will have your procedures change day by day. So you should be able to document all of these and refine them. And one of the activities for doing this is game days where all of the team members can come together. They can identify these opportunities together and build things together. A key design principle of operational excellence is anticipate failure. So you should be able to identify failure points within your architecture by yourself and you should be able to create those test scenarios and then go through those failure scenarios and understand what will be the impact of this failure. An example of this could be that your database becomes corrupted and what will happen if such a scenario occurs. So you should be able to have procedures in place to recover from these failure situations. And finally, you should have a learning culture within the organization, within the team, so that you are able to learn from all these operational failures. The other important pillar of this framework is the security pillar. And the pillar describes how you can take advantage of cloud technologies to be able to protect your data, your systems, your assets, and improve your security posture. So a very in-depth best practice guideline is provided for you to create and architect those secure workloads on AWS. Let's look at some of the design principles. The first and foremost is to create a strong identity framework, which means that who and what can access all of that is defined via the identity foundation and you should be implementing a principle of least privilege as well as separation of duties with authorization, which is appropriate for each interaction for your AWS resources. For example, your backup team, they should be able to only view the resources or take backups, but they should not have the permissions to delete any resources. Those are the kind of activities that you would perform under this principle. The second design principle is enable traceability. You should set up systems to monitor, alert and audit any changes which are happening in your environment in real time. And you should be able to collect all those logs and all those metrics in your system. And this should be all collected together and there should be an automatic mechanism for investigation and taking action many a times to either alert or sometimes to remediate. Apply security at all layers means that you should have a defense in depth approach with multiple security controls in place. So you might have a web application. Your security should not just be at the gateway level or at the load balancer level, but it should also be on the instances, on the databases, on the storage that you have. So not just at the entry point, but at every layer and at every level, you should be implementing security. You should automate security best practices. Uh, there are several tools which are available with AWS as well as in the open source community for you to automate these best practices. For example, when someone opens up a firewall rule, which is open to the entire world, you should be able to get notification that such a rule has been opened, such a rule should then be blocked or deleted. You know, these are some of the automations that you can implement. The data should be protected both in transit as well as at rest. So you should enable encryption when the data is at rest. You should enable SSL or TLS so that when your data is getting transited, it should be protected. Keeping people away from data is also very important. So mechanisms and tools should be implemented to reduce or eliminate people touching data or manual processing of data. So mishandling, modification or human error while handling sensitive data should be avoided. And finally, you should prepare for a security event. So 
just like we look at the operational excellence pillar you should run those incidents or run those scenarios and have the incident management and the processes in place as per your organization requirement so you run those incident responses simulations you use the tools with automation all of these will help you prepare for security events and even automate some of the actions that you need to perform the next pillar is the reliability pillar and this pillar encompasses the ability of a workload to perform its intended function correctly and consistently basically you determine that how reliable is the architecture how reliable is the application and then what are means and measures i can take to make it more reliable let's look at the design principles of this pillar the first one of course is that you should have mechanisms in place to recover automatically from a failure so you should be having processes in place tools in place to monitor your workload for key performance indicators and then automation can trigger when a threshold is breached an example of this is that when the traffic exceeds a certain number of connections your auto scaling group kicks in and adds instances to take care of additional traffic the second point is that you should be able to test the recovery procedures frequent testing must be done your backups and your restoration processes should be tested various other failure scenarios should be simulated tested and all of this helps you to make your application more and more reliable and reduce your risk the third one is to scale horizontally to increase the aggregate workload availability so in a normal world what we do is if an instance is reaching a threshold well 80% or 90% what we do is we increase the instance size and that is scaling vertically however what we should do is we should have processes in place so that we are scaling horizontally that is more instances are getting added rather than the instance is being modified to handle increase in requests the main reason for this is that then that single instance becomes a single point of failure or common point of failure and you would therefore be eliminating that scenario the next one is to stop guessing capacity so again coming back to that example if your one instance is taking care of all the traffic of all the requests and it can become a single point of failure instead of that you monitor the, your demand you monitor your workload you monitor the utilization and you should be adding and removing resources to maintain the optimal level this helps you to avoid a scenario where your resources are getting saturated managing change through automation is again another design principle so any changes which are happening through your infrastructure through your environment should be automated as much as possible and these changes should be tracked and should be reviewed learn with wizlabs success certified